In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I recently had to go to the doctor for an exam. And as the nurse was reminding me of my appointment a few days beforehand, she said, oh, and by the way, we need you to fast for 18 hours before your exam. And I said, oh, okay, I think I can do that. And I started counting backwards. And then she said, oh, and no coffee either. <laughs> Oof. Uh, so I counted backwards and realized that about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I would have to stop eating until my, my uh, doctor's appointment in the morning. And if, if Satan had showed up, and said, if you say the word, I'll turn the stones outside the doctor's office into bread. I have to admit that I would have said yes. <laughs> because I'm not Jesus. We know this story really well. We know this morning's gospel story very well. Because we read it almost every year. and We hear about it every year. And it's one of the most famous parts of Lent. It is the reason the, the way we explain what we do in Lent, the inspiration for these 40 days that we have begun this past Wednesday that we will go through until we get to the 2nd of April and Palm Sunday before we enter into the Holy Week. Lent is a time of preparation based on Jesus' own preparation for his ministry. Jesus goes out into the wilderness right after he is baptized not to purge himself of something. Although that is one reason you might go out into the wilderness and fast. But Jesus goes out into the wilderness to focus. To bring himself into oneness with God in a deep and profound way. To focus himself on that which is the most important. I had a friend... In, when I lived in St. Louis, who discovered a small company called Soylent. And not the one from the movie that you're all thinking of right now. <laughs> but a company called Soylent that made uh, basically meal-in-a-bottle type shakes. You could, you could drink this shake and you didn't have to think about eating. You didn't have to think about what you were going to make for dinner, what you were going to make for lunch. All you had to do was mix it up, drink it, and that was it for the day. Or for that meal, at least. And my friend told me that he was using this uh, meal replacement shake. And he said, it's, it's lovely. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to make dinner. It's make lunch, make dinner sometimes. It's, it's simple, and I have those t that time that I would use making food and eating it back to focus on other things. Jesus goes out into the wilderness, into the desert, into the heat and the cold and the nothingness and the nobody to focus on God and what God is asking of Jesus in his life from that point forward. what will happen in the next three years, and how they will culminate in Jerusalem and in the tomb. We started doing Lent in the church almost 1,700 years ago, by all accounts, because we realized how important Easter was as we lived into our Easter every year, into that moment of resurrection, we realized that it was so important that we had to get ready for it. We had to prepare ourselves to focus again on what was important, to train out some of those distractions. And we looked to Jesus, as the church always should, to tell us how that would work. And we read this story about Jesus going in to the desert 
to focus anew on what God's love means, what God is doing for what God has created and what God is asking in return. And the church, we the church said, we will do the same for the same amount of time. Many of you know that I was in California last week for my grandmother's memorial service, which happened on Shrove Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday. And after the memorial, which was a morning room memorial, we were um, kind of hanging out at her house for the last time. Um, and much of my family, which is culturally Catholic, if not practicing Roman Catholic, uh, realized that that moment that it was Shrove Tuesday. It hadn't occurred to them until about 2.30 in the afternoon. That t the next day was Ash Wednesday. And so one of my um, relatives started asking everyone, what are you giving up for Lent? What are you giving up for Lent? What are you giving up for Lent? And I'm not sure if she was just curious or if she was trying to get an idea of what she should do. But it's one of those things that becomes a ubiquitous question around this time of year. What are you giving up for Lent? When I lived in St. Louis, it was that and fish fries. The church. That you could shake a stick at. We tend to focus on the fasting. And we think of it as purgative. Often we treat it as self-help in some way. You know, we, we will fast from food and maybe we'll lose that last pesky 10 pounds. We fast from coffee because we think it will make us drink only half a pot in Easter rather than a whole pot or a pot and a half. Or we fast from chocolate or we fast from swearing or whatever it is because we think it will make us a better person. When the focus that Jesus took was not getting rid of things because they were bad, but getting rid of things but fasting so that he could focus on what was really important. If we fast, we fast from that which distracts us, that which keeps us from focusing, keeps us from remembering what God has done for us. Some people who are smarter than I am have said that the point of fasting in Lent is actually not that we succeed, it's that we fail. Because whether we succeed or we fail, whether we remember that we're not supposed to drink coffee during the week and only on Sundays at church, and accidentally order a caramel macchiato on a Thursday because we've forgotten that it's Lent, whether we forget that we're not eating chocolate and we pop that Hershey's kiss in our mouth, or whether we make it all the way through Lent without ever violating the, the fast. The point is to keep in mind God's grace. If we, if we fail at our fast, the world doesn't end. Jesus still rises from the tomb. We still sing the A word on Easter. I almost said it. The world, God's love goes on if we break the fast if we don't quite make it to the 40 days. God's grace is still with us. And some people say that's the point. Jesus succeeded in fasting for 40 days. But that's Jesus. If we break our fast, God still loves us. He still asks us to focus on what is most important God's love for us, to us, and from us, to God and each other. Are we focused on that? Lent asks us. Where have we not been focused on God's love for the world and everyone in it? Where have we not, where have we lost focus on doing justice? on loving mercy? Where have we missed 
where our focus become fuzzy on walking humbly with our God in love with God and with each other. That is the question of Lent. That is the purpose of the fast. The fast is secondary. That focus, that renewal of that which is essential to God and to us as followers of Jesus, that is primary. That is what the fast is for. When Jesus and his disciples walk through a field and pick a bit of grain on the Sabbath so that they have something to eat and they get criticized for it, Jesus says to those critics, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath's secondary. Life and love and the people God, that God loves are primary. The Sabbath teaches us what is important. And that is people, God's creation, love. And just in the same way, the fast teaches us what is important, reminds us what the focus of God's love is, and that is God, the relationship between us and God and us and each other. And so the question this Lent, the question that Jesus goes out to remember in the desert for 40 days, in spite of the prodding of Satan, the thing that Jesus goes out to focus on, to keep laser focused on for the next three years of his ministry that culminates in Jerusalem in a tomb that stands empty on a Sunday, is what is most important. God's love and our reflection of it. question this Lent, when we strip everything else away, what is the most important thing? God's love and our reflection of it in thought and word and deed. Amen.